Madam Chair, permit me to first thank and congratulate the co-chairs for putting in place this initiative uh, to discuss the participation of women in UN-led peace processes on a very important day when we celebrate International Women's Day. We have all heard many times and know for a fact that violations of human rights in most conflict affected communities disproportionately affect women and children. In situations of heightened violence and insecurity, women are the most vulnerable segments of the population. They may even experience such violations from within the family itself, in addition to existing discrimination in society. We know that this has been exacerbated by the pandemic. Last year was a pivotal year for advancing gender equalities, where we commemorated the 25th anniversary of the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action considered the most progressive blueprint ever for advancing women's rights. The 20th century, uh, anniversary of the United Nations Security Council, Resolution 1325 on Women, Peace and Security, and the five-year milestone in the path to achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. Whilst recognizing that vital steps have been taken by the global community towards achieving gender equality and empowering women and girls, we know that challenges and obstacles remain that stall the socio-economic and political development of women. Madam Chairman, I must however hasten to remind ourselves of the salutary message by our Commissioner for Human Rights, Madam Bachelet, who had this to say, quote, she said the Beijing Platform for Action was nothing short of revolutionary, that we should always celebrate it. But we must remind ourselves that the Beijing agenda is unfinished. The risk for setbacks are real and growing. She went on to say, we must resist the challenges to the hard-won information of what we know. Women's rights are human rights and they are not negotiable. Human dignity cannot, she said, be dissected, compartmentalized, compromised. And most importantly, she said, nor can it be the privilege of a few. I'm also reminded of the words of Malala Yousafzai, who said, I quote, I raise my voice not so much as, as to be heard, but so that those without a voice can be heard. We cannot succeed when half of us are held back." Unquote. This surely must be the reason that 20 years since the adoption of the WPS agenda, we still feel that women are being held back. What then can we do to accelerate this process? How can we ensure or assure the enhanced leadership and participation of women in peace processes and political engagements. We commend, of course, the Secretary General for the leadership that he has taken to improve gender parity at the United Nations, particularly at the senior leaders level and amongst the United Nations resident coordinators. In the United Nations field missions, women leadership is at 41%. Sri Lanka will continue to support the Secretary-General in his endeavour to push for gender parity at all levels. Madam Chairman, Sri Lanka is proud to have a long association with the United Nations peacekeeping operations, having served as a member of the 1956 advisory committee that led to the establishment of the first classical peacekeeping mission, UNEF-1 deployed during the Suez crisis and later deployed 
as UN peacekeepers to the United Nations mission in the Democratic Republic of Congo in 1960. Having engaged in a humanitarian struggle with terrorist organizations that, you must, that used human shields, suicide bombers and child soldiers, Sri Lanka armed forces and police have been sharing expertise in handling difficult and complex terrain of the humanitarian engagement field in difficult areas of the world. With over 20,000 Sri Lankan peacekeepers having served in United Nations peace missions across the world, providing critical services to conflict-affected communities in the most difficult and dangerous terrains, they are widely recognized for their valor and capabilities and appreciated by the United Nations peacekeeping missions they serve in. Over the years, Sri Lanka has consistently made efforts to encourage women peacekeepers and currently have 12 women peacekeepers serving in the South Sudan. We believe that women peacekeepers improve overall peacekeeping performance, have greater access to communities, help in promoting human rights and protection of civilians and encourage women to become a meaningful part of the peace and political processes. As Kathy Calvin, the United Nations Foundation President and CEO put it, we should rededicate ourselves to ensuring that every girl is educated, healthy, skilled and empowered. She says, investing in their today is investing in our tomorrow. Madam Chairman, let us therefore pledge today to do much more than pay lip service to all these ideals, but work towards real change for women of the world to whom we owe a debt of gratitude for the continued existence of mankind. While it is useful to share the experience among the international community on the obstacles faced by women and the prescriptions needed to alleviate from such setbacks, we must be sensitive to the diverse situations and circumstances in which the proposed programs and strategies have to be implemented. The role of women in society is different in varied cultures and as such a one-size-fit of policy cannot be applied in the pursuance of their rights. It is imperative for policies in this regard to be formulated in tandem with domestic compulsions and requirements. Madam Chairman, let us continue to remain cognizant of the invaluable contribution of women to the social, economic and political development of countries and reaffirm our commitment towards consistent and sustainable pro-equality and pro-empowerment policies for women conducive to the local context. As a global community, we must not deter from this path and ensure that voices once unheard will be heard loud and clear. Thank you.